Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to Advent Lutheran Church for our Monday, Thursday service. Um, I will not be taking names for the prayers of intercession. Uh, there is a pause in the prayers of intercession to name those you would like to name. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing on Easter morning as well. Um, so that, that'll be the practice uh, for these three days. Um, let us begin our service with the confession and forgiveness found on the opening page of our bulletin. Please rise as you are able. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, with you and the Holy Spirit, we worship and praise one God, now and forever. Amen. first reading is from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two, two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively from Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation, call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all of God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer, offer you the sacrifice, sacrifice of thanksgiving, thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, 
This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to, be, to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an, an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man had been glorified, and God had been glorified in him. If God had been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify himself at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. 
By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us continue with prayer. Gracious God, bless us now as we gather this evening, remembering Jesus celebrating the Passover with his disciples, his instituting communion for the church and the example to love one another as he has loved us. Gracious God, may we know the promise of your love through your word, and may the thoughts, meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you. Amen. It never ceases to amaze me how over the years, uh, looking at these texts, these writings that have been around with us for, for 1900 plus years as they were written down. Um, just the depth, the richness, the power, and how being tasked with the, the job, called to the job of having to expound upon them and to preach upon them, um, they remain fresh year after year. And I can only thank God, uh, the Holy Spirit, for that. Um, I have yet to find myself saying, oh man, what am I going to do with this text this year that I haven't already done? Um, or if it's something I'm going to do that I've done before, I'm still hungering for it to say it again. There have been many years when I've approached this text and I have focused on on uh, the, the, the drama of uh, looking at the gospel lesson, the drama of Jesus actually washing the feet of the d d disciples and, and this interchange between uh, Jesus and, and Peter um, and, and what it is to stand in Peter's feet. Uh, there's been years where I've, I've, I've lifted up out of the text you know, the, the, the recognition of Jesus' betrayal by Judas Iscariot, and yet Jesus still washes all the disciples' feet, including Jesus. And, 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 and at the beginning of the text, it is quite pointed in saying, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Judas is not excluded from that. These words of of. You don't know what I'm doing to you now. And, uh, and I am your teacher and I am your Lord and I've set an example for you. What it is to love humbly as a Christian. I've preached on, 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 on what it means to be for Jesus as he says, little children, I'm with you only a little longer. And this new commandment to love one another, just as I have loved you, you should love one another. So much good stuff. But this year, looking at the text, my mind went to they're celebrating the Passover feast. And at this time, that is, is a, a meal that they have celebrated with each other. 
a couple times already in the Gospel of John. Three times already. And that this ancient meal goes at that point back 2,000 years, a tradition maintained year after year, decade after decade, lifetime after lifetime, passed down from one generation of family to the next within community, a core piece of their identity. And then I thought about all the times, not just the Passover meal, but all the times that they've eaten together. Yes, those moments, those grand moments of Jesus feeding the 5,000 or the 15,000, depending on which account you read. That happened maybe once or twice, depending on which gospel you read. Yes, that was incredible, but how many other meals, especially in John, where Jesus' ministry lasts for three years? What, 365 days in a year times three? Any math majors out there? We're looking at, at, at oh, uh, 1,100 at least dinners times that by three. You're looking at 3,500 meals, 3,500 some meals. How many of those around a campfire? How many of those on the road? How many of those with the disciples wondering are we going to have enough for the journey or where the next meal is going to come? How many of those where there was conversation, sharing of each other's lives, listening to Jesus, to his teachings, marveling at his words, at the love in those words, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. How he gazed at each of his disciples. Have you ever sat around a campfire? Have you ever had conversation around a campfire and had the hours the minutes and then the hours go by. The people around you talking. There's, there's something primeval. There's something that, that touches the core. Sitting around a fire, especially at night, with the flames reflecting off the face, enhancing the, 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 the emotions on the face, the fire reflected in the eyes as you gaze at one another. Relationships deepened as the dark, the dark is illuminated in the circle of faces looking inward putting the darkness at bay and the warmth and the security, the intimacy, the vulnerability, the strength gathered around, especially around a fire where a meal is shared. I, I think in our effort 
to kind of put ourselves into the text to try to relate to Peter or, or what Jesus' meaning of being a humble leader, a humble Christian, what it is to be little children and, and this new commandment. That whomever we try to enter this text by, that, that, that we can kind of forget or overlook the depth of relationship that is already there. That when Jesus moves on from meal with these disciples, a meal that that they had shared hundreds and hundreds, thousands of times, that there was a closeness, a bond to them a bedrock of relationship and knowing of each other that had to be deeply comforting, especially at this Passover meal that was weighted with so much religious and spiritual meaning for them, cutting to the core of their identity of who they, uh, of who they are. And at this particular meal, the darkness was surrounding them. The crowds that that had greeted them with Hosanna and the highest, as we sang this past Sunday, have turned against Jesus and his disciples. The authorities are starting to look for them. That at this point, that, 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 meal that may have seemed casual at times down through the years, all those nights gathered around a fire on this particular occasion, I I have to imagine that they were savoring this moment deeply, that they needed the, the nourishment, not just the physical nourishment, the spiritual, the love nourishment, that they needed seated around that table to see that look of love in Jesus' eyes that, 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 that shone on them so many times around all those campfires. No wonder Peter is jumpy. He's trying to, he needs, he needs to be fed. He needs to know that it's going to be okay. And so when Jesus goes to wash his feet, he's like, no, don't wash my feet. Well, if I don't wash your feet, you're not going to have anything. Oh, oh, wash my head. Wash everything. It's like he's just... Just the, the tenderness of his heart and his emotions, sensing what's going to come in the next few days. And when Jesus washes their feet, and I've done foot washings in churches in previous calls, it's something I'd be open to doing here. But there is a high level of vulnerability to doing a foot washing. There's an aspect to doing a foot washing as a congregation that honestly I think is a little different than this one. I have not sat around a campfire with all of you people for the past 1,500 meals. To know you all all that well and for you to know me. Yeah, we know each other well. And I know looking around this room, those who are here in worship in person, you've known each other for decades, everybody who's here. I know that. Maybe you all have shared all the, that many meals together in that time period. But yeah, there's a high level of vulnerability that there's, there's, there's kind of, that, that not everybody's comfortable with. But these men, they knew each other well. They knew each other deeply. It wasn't I would have imagined that much of a jarring intimacy thing for their feet to be washed by Jesus. 
It was a common enough practice. Usually a servant did it. But for Jesus to do it, and for Jesus to do it, the same look of love in his eyes that they had known throughout his ministry of following him, I don't think it was that big of a leap for them. Not, not as much as us modern-day folks in the context of a church. That it was not that big of a step and that Jesus really was giving them a gift. That he was taking the intimacy of this moment, the power of this moment, the need they felt in this moment, knowing the crowds had turned against him. That they needed something extra to bind them together. That they needed this meal of communion, that the Passover be transcended into this meal. And they needed that foot washing. That Jesus was equipping them to send them out into the world because he has to go somewhere for at least a while where they can't go. And we too have to go out of this place into this world. With all the darkness that, that comes in upon us, the tragedies of, of the bridge falling in Baltimore, the wars in Ukraine, Palestine, Haiti. Americans are escaping Haiti, but the Haitians have nowhere to go. Turmoil in Sudan, the Sudanese who suffer. Most affluent nation in the world, and yet there are people who hunger who need clothes, who need shelter. It's a fact. I know there are different, different political, economic ideas on how to address the problems, but yet the problem remains. Diseases, illnesses, folks in this congregation this week and last week that we grieve. So much that threatens and crowds in around us. And so we gather here. We gather here to be nourished. We gather at this meal with the promise that God's love is here, that we are comforted and we are told that God's kingdom is for us, that Jesus goes and prepares a place for us. And that kingdom comes into this world through us. And that this community, this meal, this gathering strengthens us and sustains us that we need not fear the darkness of the world that crowds in upon us, threatening to overwhelm us. So, when you come up and take communion, think about what this meal means. Think about what this meal meant to those disciples who knew Jesus. That those same eyes that Jesus looked upon those disciples and loved them so deeply, Jesus looks upon us with the same depth of love and compassion. Even when our sins get the best of us, even on our 
even on our days when we're not as bold as Peter or as stalwart as Thomas, maybe as a betraying as Judas, we come to this table and we are loved, that this is our ritual. And that you can come here and be fed at this table whenever life gets the best of you. Whenever you need it, it's here. This is our ritual. And if you can't wait until Sunday, give me a call. I deliver. Better than any uh, DoorDash or anything else out there. I'll bring communion to you if you need it. Or you can come here and I'll give it to you. Amen. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God, who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. 
God who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine, inspire in us a reverent care for the earth, sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love. Transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who was betrayed, Comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Hear the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near, especially those we say out loud or in our hearts. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. God, who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion today and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities in faith, of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints, especially Charles and Marion. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you all. And all with you. Let us share the peace with one another. If you had not done so before the service, um, you may do so afterwards, and that is leave an offering in the offering plate uh, in, near the entrance of the sanctuary or through the online bulletin or at the website. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the trees of all, unite them with the prayers we offer now. Grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, 
we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Uh, okay. I'll pray. 
For those communing in the pew or online, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you have strengthened us with this saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that your fruits, that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This time you may be seated. Uh, those who will be stripping the altar may come forward. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel, and you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them, to you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the tomb. You kept me safe in my on my mother's breast. 
On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a raving, a roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For the dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircle me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing, they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted, he did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. 